So you say, if you don't believe you and your needs are important, you won't be receptive to the good things the world wants to give you. That's a good starting point. Why do you think so many guys subjugate their needs? Um, we've been taught to, and we inaccurately internalized, ironically, that that was the best way to get our needs met. I mean, think about it. If, if you're a small child, infant, and you don't have a lot of thinking, processing power, just survival power, and uh, let's say you, you quickly come to the awareness that the caretakers in your life are not real competent. They don't respond timely. They don't respond con consistently. They don't respond with what you really need. And um, so what you learn is, well, maybe if I get rid of my needs or maybe if I become needless and wantless, I mean, this isn't thought, it's just emotional survival reaction. If I take care of their needs, if I make sure they're okay, then they'll be okay to make sure I'm okay. And all of this begins before we can even think about it. So it gets wired into our nervous system. Then we grow up to be children, adolescents, adults, and we just keep following the same thing that got wired in when very inaccurately when we were just a few months old. Isn't it strange to think that we can rail against the world not giving us the things that we want, meanwhile we don't make the things that we want a priority? Well, that's that's a big piece I've worked on, and I work, you know, I work with men, and uh, that's a really big piece. I, you know, I used to do things like not tell anybody what my needs and wants were, or even hide them, or I still at times make it difficult for people to give to me. I've been told by many people in my life that I'm difficult to give to, uh, so I consciously work at that. Another piece with the men I work with, uh, I call nice guys is again, they believe they're bad for having needs, everybody else's needs are more important. And here, here again, the kind of the distorted logic that a lot of us use, I've done this, a lot of guys do this, women do it too, is they'll go find a person whose life is a mess. You know, they, they can't pay their own bills, they can't hold a job, they, they, they fight with everybody they know, they're depressed, they're, you know, whatever. And we think, I can fix them up. I'll, I'll, I'll dedicate all my resources to getting them good. And once they're good, They'll get. They'll, they'll be there for me. They'll mm -hmm. help me get my needs met. But that's just ter terrible, <laughs> terrible strategy. If you want to get your needs met, go find people who are already competent at getting their own needs met, and who are available to help give to you. But again, most of the stuff is so unconscious we're not thinking about it. We just keep doing the same thing, hoping that at some point it will work. And then again. Often when people then do try to give to us, no, no, that's okay. It's all right. No, mm, it doesn't matter. The no, minimization. Matter. Yeah, just, yeah. No, 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 no. So, um, yeah, this is a big piece I've been working on in my own life. Yeah. I, uh, there's something, I think, especially for guys, that seems kind of like romantically heroic about, I don't need anybody or anything. Yeah. I can make this work on my own. There's something kind of, not desperate, but but tangential to desperate and 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 needy about having needs uh and i think the reverse of that of maybe if you tell people what you want sometimes they'll give it to you creating a reframing that so that it's something which is aspirational to do uh i think is a hurdle that many guys may struggle to get over you know Talk about that, that, that dynamic with men. Because again, I, I've been working with men for 30 years. And a really core pattern I see is just this pattern of, of going it alone, you know, isolating themselves. Mm -hmm. Another way I put it is so many men, and especially the younger men, um, uh, millennials, generation below, they grew up with the internet. And it's like, that's all they need. You know, they, they, they just, they hang out, I call it, they hang out in the nursery. Nothing's required of them. Nothing's demanded of them. Uh, they, they get all their connections on social media, spend all their time on the internet, binging on Netflix, playing World of Warcraft, smoking dope, drinking, jerking off to porn. Just, and, th and that's their life. And to actually go connect with other real life human beings who could actually nurture them, fill their bucket, give them social connection, it feels like they'd have to give up too much. Mm -hmm. They have to give up mm -hmm. all this other stuff over here that, that, that consumes them. And maybe even, there, I think there's a fear that they might even have to reveal too much of themselves and reveal how shallow and empty and non-productive their lives really are. And so they just keep doing the same thing. 
Yeah, when you're siloed off, no one is peering in to look at exactly how are you spending your day and exactly yeah. what do you think? And yeah. when do you get out of bed? You've got this great quote where you say, your mind would rather manage old and familiar anxieties than confront new and unknown ones. And I think that's exactly well, what you're talking that's about. That's just a given. You know, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. And, and for, for so many men, I liken it to, I call it an emotional tree fort. I, I, I don't know where you grew up if you had trees around you, but <laughs> we had trees, we had tree forts. And, you know, the, 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 the ideal perfect day is if, you know, you or one of your buddies found somebody's dad's Playboy magazine or whatever, Hustler, Penthouse, whatever, and you go up in the tree fort, pull the ladder up, nobody can find you, and you can just be all by yourself and do whatever you want. And no, and it's kind of like a lot of men just continue that that mentality of just wanting to live in that emotional tree fort where they pull the ladder up, nobody can track them, nobody knows what they're up to, uh, they don't have to get real, accountable, mm -hmm. vulnerable with anybody. And then, then we wonder why, you know, statistically, you read how many men are isolated, lonely, depressed, the tolls that it takes on us physically, emotionally, early death. Look at any, you know, in this country, any of the, you know, the, 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 the multiple shooters, it's all lonely, isolated white young men. And, and you know, now it's men, you know, men going their own way, incels, just, you know, they're just, you know, just saying, hey, we're advertising it now. We're in the club of guys that basically aren't in a club. Yeah, they, they self-ID uh, in their isolation. Yeah, exactly. It becomes our, their identity. Mm -hmm. And then it also then becomes easier to blame somebody, something outside of you, whether it's women, society, culture, feminism, you know, whatever, well, let's blame them for my isolation. And I was speaking, I was at a retreat this weekend with, with uh, about 40 men, and I spoke to them about this. And, you know, if I had to pull a number out of my ass, I'd say, you know, maybe 80% of the isolated, lonely men are isolated by choice, not because they've lost a partner, not because they've had an accident or an illness or a major financial setback. It's by choice. It's their preference. And then all the while, wonder why they can't get love, can't get laid, you know, can't get a promotion at work, don't have any friends. It's, it's, it seems to be a voluntary uh, place to be. I understand why guys have a skepticism and a retreat from the world around them, though. Uh, it's not to say that they can't overcome it themselves and that the agency is in their hands to fix the problem. But I do think that a lot of guys feel like their challenges are being dismissed by the whining of a privileged class that they themselves don't actually feel like they're a part of. That you know, it, it is so ironic how all the projections out there of who's actually privileged privileged in our culture, mm -hmm. and you know, you have men saying, "Well, you know, now women and minorities and immigrants are privileged, and the women and minorities and immigrants go; those white guys are privileged." <laughs> and, and you know, I, I've really never found where blame or pointing fingers resolves much of anything or gets you anywhere. Yes. I, that being said, if you are a guy that is struggling and isolated and alone and doesn't have many connections, hearing that the world out there considers you to have some sort, like you're the original oppressor. Yeah, exactly. You know? I get it. You are the, the OG. The patriarchy. Yeah, yeah, of course. You are the OG oppressor. Um, That is going to encourage you to check out. It's like, hey, well, I'm it, suffering. It's an excuse. You can I'm, use it as a great excuse. Correct. Yes. Yeah, it legitimates your your prize already. Okay, 